Hey guys, and welcome back to Talos Principle. We're at we're the lat we're at five of seven in World C. We have four out of four. We need four to do. Blah, 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 blah. Wow, I lost that sentence completely. Let's just give up on it. Uh, so we have four sigils to go and three stars, which I guess are technically also sigils, but for a different purpose. Anyway, probably. Many ages have passed since the first words were spoken in the darkness. Initiate program. Generations of your kind have come and gone since those words. The garden has changed many times. But I remember. I remain. Only within me can you find immortality. It definitely cements his status as just being nothing more than a program and nothing else when he's like... He's talking about the original words of God, but instead of it being like... And he said, let there be light, and there was light. It's his, uh, his, initiate, his initial thing was, initiate program, which is just how programs start. Congratulations, that's not quite, has, does not quite have the gravity. Although it may have just as much gravity for a AI. Like, my character might have all sorts of gravity attached to that statement. But for me as a human, I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> when the scale of it all overwhelms me, this is what I tell myself. We can calculate the age of the Earth, the size of the universe, the future of the stars. Sure, we are minuscule, momentary flashes of thought on a grain of sand drifting through the cosmos. But our minds can recreate the past and predict the future. On, say, Friday, a million years from now, we'll all be dead. But right now, we know what the night sky will look like on that day. And so, in a way, we're not entirely bound by time. Knowledge is a, a kind of freedom. So she's talking about our amazing capacity to know things far beyond what we could possibly experience ourselves. Also, hey, found the pain bucket. Already found a pain bucket. Found this computer. Found a distant computer that looks more secretive. And we've already got. Ta da! I'm just going to rest here for a while. I need a moment of peace. Destiny can wait. Let's see if I can paint anything with this here bucket. I don't really know what I can accomplish with this thing. Let's take a look. Anything new is the main thing I'm looking for. Uh, I have now traveled this land extensively and I can say without hesitation that this is the most beautiful spot. This is, there's more of this place than it seems. I've seen things you can only imagine. Do not be afraid to doubt. Let's see, is there anything else around here that I haven't seen before? It looks like stuff I've seen before gonna put up this little one. I know I'm being pretty innocuous with my, with my placements. Uh, main G opened me my eyes to the idea that you could go in a crazy... You can go to crazy locations and post crazy stuff and be like, Aha, look how amazing I am. I was able to jump all the way up here, but I'm going for the pretty basic of let's just use these things when we find them and just place our mark on the world so that if, if any, of my fr any of my friends play this game in the future, they can follow in my footsteps. Uh, I'm very aware though that if someone just played this game, if someone's playing this series in, in procession, I spent a ton of time at a computer just now, so I'm going to skip on this for now. I'm going to do a test first, then do this computer, then do another test, and then, or maybe even two of them, then do the secret computer, just to space it out a bit. I keep trying to imagine that all of this is designed for some purpose, not just the challenges, but Elohim, the terminals, the glitches and all. The puzzle isn't before our eyes, it's behind them. Sheep. Get it? The puzzle's in our brain. It's in our brain. Okay, I'm going to check out some of these challenges, because I'd rather not do more marathon reading at a terminal moments after having just done one in the previous episode. So, here we have, we're looking for a square, we're gonna get, uh, we have play, we have block, and we have connector. And time crawls. Why play button? Why must you plague me in my dreams? You make everything so much more complicated. Okay, so, we have a blue source, I don't see anything else in there accompanying it, just, uh, that's the, that's one big power of the third person perspective. Every time I, I see anyone play this game, they play it in first person. They might not know that third person even exists, but not only do I think it's a not only do I think it's a more pleasant viewing experience for the audience, but I actually have better field of view in general. And I can see around corners a bit to see if there's stuff in, in certain rooms. So obviously, I can put something on this button to to connect to this, keep this open so that we have the access to the blue source. Need to figure out where the blue receiver is though, so let's put this button down here. I'll mess with the play button later once I have a better idea of what my goal even is when I mess with such things. So, here's the. I wonder, can I create a dupli 
We've never tried before. Can I create a duplicate of a connector? That might be the puzzle here. That might be exactly what we're going for here, is I might have to create a duplication of the connector in order to proceed, which would definitely be a new experience for me. I don't even know if the connector will function in that context, but I guess we'll find out. Let's see. So, first of all... I want to get a connector in some direction. Let's see. So my goal here, I need to figure out exactly what I'm going to do with my two connectors, if that's even what's possible here. So there's no spots I can shoot through here, right? It's all solid wall. It is all solid wall. There's my exit when I get out. Okay, so. First, first laser has to go straight down this hallway. No exceptions. But second laser could go through that hallway, that uh, window right there. So first laser goes here, probably. Shooting straight down this hall. And then second one probably goes just inside this window and connects to that. So my recording laser has to be here, I assume. But my future laser can go way down there, I guess. Huh. This is going to be za za interessant. So. First of all. Huh. Question is, how do I keep both these open at once? I guess if I physically stand here, I'm set, right? Okay. So I need to be the recording that stands on this box. That's my recorded box standing there. And then future box can go open the other door, and then future connector can connect to the laser. If it's this easy, I'm going to be very impressed with myself for figuring out so fast. So this is really just a waiting part for me. The recording is going to be very simple. Oh, I just need to make sure that the recording's long enough in order to help me out. Sorry about the yawn. I'm trying to mass record right now because I have one of my br one of my very not very common opportunities to do a lot of recording, and I've had trouble with my backlog. But for once, I might actually be able to schedule videos and have like more than I need and stuff. Okay, so now that the recording is keeping that door open, let's open up. Quick, 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 quick. Just limit. Oh god. All right, so uh, connect. Connect. Really, I hope this wasn't too sl not enough time or something. In, uh, in, 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 and win. Anything hidden in here before I get locked in or something? Oh, there's a, there's a ladder. I just saw it, so we're fine. Okay, so that was very easy. I immediately figured that out. So I was like, wait, this seems like a weirdly long hallway for a laser to go through. Huh? I wonder if I need to record the laser and duplicate it. And that's exactly what happened. I don't think we've ever had recorded lasers yet. I'm slightly scared by the prospect of that because. Setting up a laser array, like half of a laser array, and then having to connect it, and then setting up the other half. Sounds like it could become really fucking tedious really fast, actually. That was pretty quick, and I'm still- so to pace things a little better, I might- No, let's just- let's just talk this thing, fuck it. I I- I created a little bit of variety. Party on, dudes! Sounds like my kind of person. Or the opposite of my kind of person. By Le Le Lubomir. Gorgiv. I'm not even gonna try again on that one. That's that's way outside of any names I've been exposed to before, even in fantasy games. Uh, the land party at the end of the universe. Yo, I don't know if you folks noticed, but it's the end of the world. There's nothing we can do about it, so instead of sitting around crying, how about we have some fun before we croak? Yes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's go play some video games! It's land party time! Two days from now, we're all getting together at the old school library. There'll be, there'll be noms, Drinks, music, and old school gaming. You're invited, and bring your friends too, especially if they're hot. See you at 3000 BC. Blub blub. That's that's a great. I would want to go to a land party when the world. I I might want to go. I don't know. I jokingly say I'd want to go to a land party when the world ends, but for all I know, my entire outlook on life would completely be shattered and start over, and I'd have to rethink everything the moment I was exposed to that kind of information. Which is what happens in seeking a friend for the end of the world. Seriously, I keep re mentioning that movie because it's a really good companion piece to this series. You should probably watch it. I think it's on Netflix or whatever. I don't know. Nadia Sarabai, Ian mailing list. Uh, progress report 32. We've gotten to that irritating point where all the major stuff is in place and all we have to deal with are a million little things. The main modules are all functioning and interacting with each other correctly. The process is happening more or less as planned. This could actually work, but it's still crude as hell. Some of it's just surface stuff, like random new user random usernames. Some of it's more worrying. Various bugs, the fact that we haven't run more extensive tests. Uh, we've got a lot of polishing to do. 
With the team down to half original size, I'm not sure we can actually finish everything that needs to be done. So I'm really, I'd really like to discuss tomorrow morning. Oh, so what I'd really like to discuss tomorrow morning is a new set of priorities. Please put some thought into what you think must be finished at all costs. Nadja. P.S. Alexandra, get some sleep. I know you're still working. This is how this is your baby. We're going to need your input tomorrow. So Alexandra seems to be the one that's always stuck to this thing and working nonstop. I think Alexandra might be the one who left the audio logs. I can't remember if it's Alexandra or Nadia. We had confirmation at some point, but I can't remember specifically. But I think it was Alexandra. Philosoph uh, that was a progress report uh, 32, of course. That was what was said in the email. This is philosophy of teeth. We're going to talk about carnivores here. Well, I guess carnivores and herbo... I guess a lot of things have teeth. <laughs> Last night, I had a simple but brilliant idea. Everyone who would like to write about philosophy or spirituality, especially to make some kind of grand statement about the nature of the body and the soul, should first experience a really bad tooth infection. I don't just mean a slight toothache. I mean the kind of hardcore infection that happens when several incompetent dentists miss a cavity in one of your back teeth and the thing keeps growing and growing until the nerve itself is really badly infected. I mean the pain is unimaginable. It comes in waves, and then waves drown out everything ar about around you. You can't talk, you can't move, you can't think. There's just pain, and absolutely nothing else. It's like your brain just gets hijacked by it. And then, you go to the dentist, and assuming you get a decent one, they stick some chemicals in you, which makes you numb, then they drill a hole in you, cut the nerve, snip snip, and it's all over. Just like that. Like repairing a car or a watch. Your whole existence was crippled by this tiny, tiny nerve sending electrochemical signals into your brain, and this unimaginable, un unimaginable pain, which nearly blotted out your very consciousness, can be stopped by just a little cut. We should call this the Toothos Principle, because it's, but that's incredibly stupid. <laughs> I got a kick out of that, but yeah, that's... It's one of those things that makes you think about how much of a machine we are, is the idea that, like, we're just this lump of parts and one tiny change can cripple or save everything in a catastrophic level. So we have another blo big block, but this one's gonna have fan, it's gonna have a block, and it's gonna have a connector. Why not? Dumbwaiter! Yeah! I've heard a lot of references to dumbwaiters lately. Why, why is that? Oh, right, I've been watching Game Grumps, and Steam Train is playing Leisure Suit Larry 3, or some other Leisure one of the one of the numbers, and they there's like so many dumbwaiter jokes in that for some reason. Like, too many. Uh, Obviously, connect immediately, find out what we get. And immediately we get new pieces. So I can jump on them, but I can't make stairs out of them because there's only two. So let's see what use they have back in here. Huh. Okay, that's a very tall wall. I was going to say, I could make a tower out of two of these and then just hop over. Because it would let me jump to it. But uh, that's why they made a tall wall for this one specifically. You can tell that they tested some of this stuff. Okay, so we have a, bu we have a, a button to press here that opens that door. And we have a fan here and a button here. The noteworthy thing does the does it does it power the fan? Oh, wait, what is this power? It goes up. Oh, this powers the uh, exit. So I need to somehow get something in here. Probably, I'm I'm gonna guess I need to put a blue laser here to make this power the fan get powered, which makes me it makes so I can put a box on here that I can stand on, which makes me levitate, and then a second box. I can drop a second box over this ledge, and it'll land on that. So I think that's the solution, but first, I need to find the components for that. Uh, I assume I'm going to need more than I have right now. Although I may as well just move this in a position so it can power everything, right? Ta-da! Oh! That's interesting there. It also powers the, uh, the shield. We'll have to keep that in mind. I'll leave it there just so I remember how it works. Grab the other box in case it comes in handy. I wonder how this is going to come into play, this increased altitude over here. Oh, is that a- what's that in the distance? There's a, there's a golden thing out there. On- out, uh... Over there. There's like a golden- is that a golden fan? I think? By the way, when I zoom in and out, the box stays exactly where it is. That's not... That's kind of unfortunate. <laughs> that's- I would even say that might be- that's bo not, not- not necessarily a glitch, but just like a, a not implemented feature. That the zoom shouldn't work that way. I should be zooming past the box, not that the box shouldn't be zooming in with me. That's not how eyesight works. Alright, so, nothing can come with me through here, right? Just hanging out back here? Okay. So, what can I find in here that might affect the outside world? This is an empty area. Upstairs we have the fan. Is it powered on? 
It is not powered on. I believe. Okay. I have no option to detach it, so the gold icon, the gold fans must be the ones you can't disable because it's built in. So. It would, it would appear that using this. Huh. It would appear that by coming over here, you could hop onto. onto the top of a fan you put. Yeah. You can start 11. You can put two blocks on top of each other. That's pretty straightforward. You put two blocks on top of each other, and you just simply hop on top of one. And then you throw the top one through that grate, and then you're done, right? Like, that's the whole puzzle? But what does this fan do? I don't understand the purpose of that necessarily. Huh. I'll figure it out. So, let's disable you. And we'll stack up some boxes. Box number one, box number two. Hello, boxy. There we go. And we're gonna connect some blue things together for the sake of it. Oh, that's the problem here. Okay. So an obvious problem here is that I can't physically connect, uh... Huh. That is a problem. I can't connect these together. Unless that's the solution. Oh! Is this somehow what they want me to do? Hang on a second. Put that up top. Are they expecting me to, uh... What powers that fan again? Is it this? Oh no, it's the blue light. Okay, I was thinking maybe I levitate the connector upstairs and grab it. But I can't levitate it without a blue source connecting it. And the blue source is behind the wall. Am I missing something? Is there another connector around here I didn't notice at first? I'll double check inside that area just to be sure. Anything to be found? I can hop over this wall, but that doesn't necessarily help much. Actually, I can't hop over that wall. Okay, so what am I going for? What is my goal right now? Obviously, I need something on this button. So I need to somehow get something through that grate so that I can land on top of the button. That's my entire goal. So now the question is just how do I accomplish that part? Let's see. I can't physically hop on top of this anyway, but even if I could, if I drop this thing through, then I wouldn't be able to open... Let's see... Would I be in trouble if I don't have a blue anymore? I guess not. Just stepping on the button is all I need, so if I can drop something there, I'm set. Huh. Wonder if I can make that jump. Let's find out. Oh, right. Something has to be here physically. Huh. I kind of... I'm starting to think myself in circles now and not making a lot of progress. This fan has to be important somehow, but how do I connect... I don't see how I could possibly connect a blue to this spot. It doesn't have direct line of sight with anything, does it? Let's take a look around. There's a window here. Does that window... There's a tree here. Is the tree in the way, or can I shoot a laser past the tree? That might be the key, but then what is this... What exactly is accomplished by the fan, necessarily? Huh. Ha. Huh. Ha! Alright, let's see if I can in any way lock onto that, uh, the thing out there. I can't see it at all. Oh, I see hints of it now, but it's behind a tree and it's not locking on. Is there a better position to be in? What if I stack these, these boxes over here? If I stack these boxes over here, maybe I can take- oh right, I can't jump on top of both of them. Shit. <laughs> Trying to establish a line of sight with that goddamn thing out there. Come on, I see you over there. Just give it to me. You're being difficult now. Okay, uh. Drop that over there. If I stand on over there, will, it, will I be able to see it properly? How am I not? How could I possibly get any closer without. Come on. Alright, come on. Oh, it is slightly out of, out of line of sight, isn't it? I'd need to be like one pixel taller. Oh, wait. I like very briefly had line of sight. I don't think it's gonna give it to me. I don't think it'll let me connect that. Oh, there we go. That somehow happened. Okay, but now what's my chances of being able to connect it anyway? The tree seems to be in my way, so I almost like need a way of knocking down that tree. Let's see. I'm running around hoping that maybe it'll light up. 
But I don't know if that's... Oh, can I do it over here? See, I could probably make a connection from over here because it goes through purple, but then I don't have access to the source. Let's see here. I have an extra box I could potentially use it to stack with. So if I get the right angle, I might be able to contain... No. It's behind the wall, so I can't get line of sight regardless. I am genuinely... I may be stuck. Okay. I'll see you guys in a little while when I feel like I'm making some kind of progress. Oh, here we go. There's a gap in the grating, isn't there? Where is it? Yeah. There's a vertical gap, just barely, that just slightly gives you enough room to power this fan. Oh. Oh, goody. It also blocks you. So I need to get a... So I, I assume what I need to do is I need to put a fan in... Oh. I've made it all the way to, like, the last spot on this before. Okay, this isn't too bad. I think I know what to do now. Uh... Let's see here. So first of all, I need to put a fan in... I went into position for this fan. And then I need to grab the connector and connect it. So one second here. Clicky clicky. Clicky clicky. Oh no, it's upstairs. What do I do? Right, now I go in here and I grab it. Wow, this is... It's one of those things where once you have it, you're like, really, that's it? Because it seems like it's pretty straightforward now. But I was really stumped. And now I don't need to go back that way anymore, so I can take this off and close the barrier. Put this in position, so that I can use the laser to fan- to uh, operate the other fan, which should hopefully blow... That should hopefully blow my, uh, target... ...directly into the hole. Come on. There we go. It went directly into the hole via the... That hole there, yeah, slid right in, and we get our piece. Ta-da! Really, the only thing I was missing was the realization that you could shoot a laser in this direction. It didn't seem possible, because I, I thought I, the grate was going to block it off, but I was missing things. And that one little element being noticed completely changed everything. Okie dokie. Huh. No stars yet, I wonder. I shouldn't think about it too much, because last time I found all the stars right when I was thinking, like, I must have missed one by now, and it tur turned out I hadn't. But now there's three, and I have I don't think I've seen any of them yet, either. Have I? I don't think I got one in the last one, either. Yeah, okay, so that's two test chambers down. I think that's a good time to check out our secret terminal, then, before we move on to the other test chambers. Transcendence. Like that terrible-looking Johnny Depp movie. Uh... Reader responses to last week's article on science and atheism. I am perfectly aware of all the arguments against religion. In fact, I agree with most of them. There is no question that there is an objective, martial reality. I mean, there is no question that there is an objective, martial reality. I also absolutely I'm also absolutely convinced that only a secular society can be truly equal and just. And yet I believe. I am, as they say, a person of faith. Religion, to me, is not about distorting observable reality with superstitions, but about transcendence. It's not about deluding ourselves that the Earth is 6,000 years old, or God will help us if we say the right words inside our heads, but about reaching out to the sublime. This is not a, re a rejection of reason, but an application to a set of experiences that cannot be approached by more traditional means. True engagement with religion is humbling. It transcends culture, nationality, and gender. As such, I think it goes hand in hand with science and is, is, not, and is not opposed to it. Dr. Omar Garib, Institute to Applied Pneumatics. And those are, as someone who's not religious, those are always the people I can understand more. Is that this general sense of feeling, the, the general feel of being a religious person isn't necessarily an object, something that I object to. It's just sometimes there's specific things in the Bibles that have say to, hey, treat certain pe types of people really awfully and here's here believe this fact that is easily proven as being not true and things like that that are difficult it's like there's a one part i think it's in the old testament where they uh they they describe the dimensions of a sphere in such weird detail which i thought was weird i'm like why don't you just call it a sphere and say it's like it's this wide and then move on but they they go into weird detail on the size of the sphere and if you take in like algebra or geometry and you know basic calculations about circles and spheres and the and the uh, value of pi. Uh, 
if you look at the d details they give you, uh, the sphere has to. The sphere is only physically possible if pi were to be equal to exactly three. And anyone who knows anything about pi knows that pi is, does not equal three. So, the sphere described in that passage is just mathematically impossible. And so it's just weird. Like I, I don't, I don't want to get too much into this, but I guess in this type of game, it's in, it's kind of in, uh, inescapable to some extent. But religion's fine. You believe whatever you want, but sometimes there's just things, like really specific details, that maybe should clue you in that maybe those books aren't be get, aren't supposed to be taken literally or as, like, objective, like, real history and science, because if all those things happened, first of all, you know, ah, we're going too far into this, but basically, but there's just, there's issues. There's, there's, a uh, what is it? It's, it's tough, because there's, there's inconsistencies between reality and what some, uh, holy books tell you uh, that can be easily disproven, and then people flip out if you point that out, but, I, like, I can't help but be like, I'm just looking at a thing, like, it's right there, and I'm looking at it, and it's just... It's that easy, like, it's not... <laughs> I'm not, I'm not like, attacking people, or pursuing them, or going really in-depth, I'm just like, here's an easily observable fact, and like, I'm furious with you now for noticing this thing, and I'm like, I don't... That's not why I noticed it, I just noticed it because it was there, I'm sorry. Openmatter.txt, true, there are certain idealist books not of a clerical character, but philosophical ones, wherein you can read that time and space are categories of our minds, that they result from the requirements of our thinking, and that nothing actually corresponds to them in reality. But it's difficult to agree with this view. If any idealist philosopher, instead of arriving in time to catch the 9 p.m. train... <clears throat> sorry. If any idealist philosopher, instead of arriving in time to catch the 9 p.m. train, should turn up two minutes late, he would see that the tail of the departing train, and he would be convinced by his own eyes that time and space are inseparable from martial reality. The task is to diminish the space, to overcome it, to, econo to economize time, to prolong human life, to register past time, to raise life to a higher level and en enrich it. This is the reason for the struggle with space and time, at the basis of which lies a struggle for subject matter to man matter. Oh, from subject matter to man matter which constitutes the foundation not only of everything that really exists, but also of all imagination. Jesus. That, uh, that whole passage just, just sounds like a direct tie to like, hey, go watch the movie Interstellar. That's the plot of Interstellar, in, in many ways.